This is Akashwani. The news read by Punita Bakshi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi warmly received his Malaysian counterpart, Dato Seri Anwar bin Ibrahim, in a ceremonial welcome at Rashtrapati Bhavan this morning. In a social media post, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaiswal said, Malaysia is a key pillar of India's Act East policy and a valued partner in the region. After the ceremonial welcome, the Malaysian Prime Minister paid tributes to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, at Rajkhat. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar also called on the visiting dignitary later today. The Prime Minister held bilateral discussions with his Malaysian counterpart in New Delhi a short while ago. Several agreements are expected to be signed after the talks. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has paid tribute to former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi on his birth anniversary today. Union Minister of Commerce and Industry Piyush Goyal underscored the significance of enhancing trade relations between India and Malaysia. During the India-Malaysia CEOs Forum in New Delhi, Mr. Goyal emphasized various opportunities for deepening collaboration that could bolster trade and business ties between the two nations. President Draupadi Murmu has stressed the need to make the country's forecasting system foolproof and more accurate so that the loss of lives due to disasters can be minimized. Addressing the gathering after presenting the National Geoscience Awards at Rashtrapati Bhavan, the President mentioned the loss of lives due to disasters such as landslides and floods in different parts of the country. She added that the National Landslide Forecasting Centre is being set up in Kolkata to issue early warning bulletins for all landslide-prone states. President Murmu said that it is important for India to become self-reliant in mineral production to become a developed nation by 2047. The President highlighted that several steps have been taken for the development of the mineral sector. She said that the reforms and innovations being undertaken in the country are not only promoting economic development but also addressing environmental protection. India and Japan will hold 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue in New Delhi this evening. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar will hold a dialogue with their Japanese counterparts. On the sidelines of the dialogue, a bilateral meeting is also scheduled between Mr. Rajnath Singh and his Japanese counterpart Kihara Minoru. During the bilateral talks and 2 plus 2 meeting, the ministers will review the bilateral cooperation and explore new initiatives to further strengthen the engagements between the two countries. They will also exchange views on regional and global issues of mutual interest. Ahead of the dialogue, Prime Minister Narendra Modi met the visiting Japanese ministers. They took stock of bilateral defence and security ties. The Supreme Court has set up a national task force to ensure the safety of medical professionals. A bench led by Chief Justice D. Y. Chandrachur, while hearing the case regarding the rape and murder of a doctor at a Kolkata hospital, directed the task force to submit its interim report within three weeks and the final report within two months. The CGI said that the court is creating a national task force comprising doctors from across the country to provide recommendations on the modalities to be followed nationwide to ensure the safety of women. Expressing deep concern over the unsafe working environment of doctors and medical professionals across the country, the court said that existing laws do not adequately address the institutional safety of doctors. The court said it has initiated the case on its own regarding the rape and murder of a doctor at R.G. Carr Medical College Hospital in Kolkata to address systemic issues, emphasizing that the nation cannot wait for another rape and murder for things to change on the ground. Medical services from Char across Charkhand have been hit due to an indefinite strike by junior doctors protesting the Kolkata rape and murder case. Our correspondent reports that so far over 10,000 patients have been deprived of proper treatment. Over 400 admitted patients at Rajendra Institute of Medical Sciences, Ranchi, have vacated the hospital as they are not receiving treatment from doctors. And that is the end of this news bulletin. 